I could go down all those rabbit holes if you want, but I know it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect you. It doesn't affect the decision. But, and, but and my the, uh, the bottom line is my decision. Yeah. For the betterment of my family. Yeah. I'm not going along with this. I I will take the fine. I will take the fine before I follow the rules of a tyrannical government. There's no reason why we should have been turned away from the border at all because all the documentation was there. He even mentioned to Customs to call the company to confirm that this is legitimate. If they had any doubts, they refused to do that. There was no follow-up with the company. Nothing. They just turned us away, whereas other people can go no problem. I need to work. I'm not quarantining for two weeks when I have my family living out of a U-Haul. I'm not doing it. You guys are not going to believe this story. This is Jeremiah and Marta. Both of them, as well as their daughter, tried to cross the border for work. And this is going to be one of the craziest stories when it comes to our tyrannical quarantine act policies. Wait till you hear it. Um, first, let's talk about why you guys were heading to the States from British Columbia. Um, I was offered a job in the Florida Keys um, as a manager of an airport uh, rebuild. Uh, infrastructure they said they would take care of all the stuff on their end we'd have no problem it's a temporary foreign worker so we hit the road with the proper uh, work, um, the work job letter. offer job offer uh, work letter everything was in order okay so you had a job offer a new opportunity what did you guys have to do to prepare to go to the states like did you have a home that you were kind of gonna come back to eventually or what well we were renting on the island and then he got the job offer and the place sold so we would have to leave anyway and then the job offer came came through so it's just really amazing how it all worked out so we gave notice we left we rented a u-haul we packed everything it's in the u-haul and we we're ready to go to the states um, for the time that he was there and then we would figure things out but that was the plan and now here we are living out of a u-haul living in a in a motel i'm not sure what to do we have nowhere to go and yeah, it's 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 really not a pleasant uh, place to be in, especially when you don't have a place to to live anymore. And there's no reason why we should have been turned away from the border at all, because all the documentation was there. He even mentioned to customs to call the company to confirm that this is legitimate. If they had any doubts, they refused to do that. There was no follow up with the company nothing they just turned us away whereas other people can go no problem okay so let's talk about that for a second so you went there you had the papers packed up the whole family and then you're saying you were refused who refused you from moving forward uh so uh the u.s border um they in a roundabout way um, said that no visa no work visa to the u.s um, fits the description of what I was going to do. Meanwhile, south, the, the U.S. south border, guys come in with even less. No problem at all. Uh, temporary foreign workers. Um, but, you know, it's funny. I just now in the news, I just forwarded it to Jeremiah. There was an article on, I believe, Global News stating that in terms of the agreement between Canada and the U.S. and the border opening, that critical infrastructure, anything that the states is building, any workers that are a part of that, they are allowed to go over. They are considered essential. And because he is working on the airport, that's critical infrastructure and he's a management position so he should be allowed to cross since that is considered essential and the Canadian government just stated that. And that's not even the craziest part of the story. That's obviously the most disappointing part of the story is you guys didn't yeah. get through. But let everybody know what happened when you're like, okay, fine, we're going to go home, we're going to figure this out, or I guess to a hotel. What happened at that point? Um, so the, board, the U.S. border basically... Um, said that instead of they were they were going to go some other legal route they used uh i would call them threats but this could go really really bad for you so what we're going to do is we're going to write you up as 
non-essential travel trying to yes it's a lie Uh, trying to pass through the border as non-essential travel so they gave us a lot of hell over that the u.s border was actually um, other than that they they were respectful kind but when we got turned around we were refused entrance back into canada for two hours and why? What was the reasoning for that? Uh, their reasoning was that we exited the vehicle on U.S. soil, which we didn't actually enter U.S. soil. We were in no man's land. Um, 30 second walk away from the Canadian border building. We were, you know, we could see the buildings. So, but why were they refusing you back into the country? Because or I guess you were already kind of in the country or in between the countries, but why, what was the holdup about? Uh, the holdup, the reason they refused us entry is because they wanted to see an itinerary or a, a list of all of the hotels that we were going to quarantine at and they wanted an address where we were going to quarantine at. Well, we packed up our house. We have nowhere to go here. We don't have friends and family here. So we were going to have to go out east to Ontario. And they were giving us grief over traveling to Ontario. Um, they wanted they wanted every hotel that we were going to stay at and their phone number. But it's not even realistic because depending on you might travel eight hours one day, then you might be tired earlier or later. Uh, you know you travel more Um, there's no way to even do that and since the emergency order here is over in British Columbia quarantine is over as well so we shouldn't have actually even been told to quarantine get those back to you and then you guys go on your way and I'll if public health asked me but yeah they left Um, and that this is their their this is their plan. And one thing I didn't like that they said was uh, when public health called me, uh, my cell phone, um, she used the word track. We're going to track you. Well, I don't think that's legal in this country to track citizens. So um, I refused the quarantine. Uh, two hours later, after fighting them and standing up for my rights as a citizen, they finally let me go, uh, let us go. And um, the RCMP was called to issue us a fine. And when the RCMP called, she basically, after hearing the story from our side, said um, they forced you out of the vehicle, baited you, and entrapped. She used the word entrapped. Entrapment. She said, that's illegal. Let's take a listen. I mean, I, I'm I'm still confused as to how me arriving at the border, but not actually crossing into U.S. soil, being in no man's land, and turning around constitutes me to have a two-week quarantine. I I, I just that's bizarre. Yeah. So I guess what I was told is because the simple fact that you exited your vehicle and entered their building. So, uh, which I think is crazy because they told you to. Exactly. This seems nuts. Even the RCMP officer is like, no, I'm not going to fine you for that reason. As you guys know, many of you who are watching and maybe some of you don't know, we have a civil liberties clinic set up called fightthefines.com where we have helped many people who have been fined for different reasons. The fine is hefty. It's about 3,400 usually per person in the family. So if that's something you're interested in, you can donate to help people like that with their legal costs at fightthefines.com. But you guys didn't even get fined. That's how ludicrous this is. So they let you guys go uh, without quarantine and you're homeless because you were refused in the border, even though it was something legit. Uh, Our passports have been flagged now, from what I've been told. Um, Because they wrote us down as non-essential travel. Which again was a lie because we came across as essential because it was due to work, which is an essential service in the United States and Canada. And his position is essential there due to the complexity of what he is going to be working on. So that was 
that was not right for the U.S. Customs to write it as non-essential because then that looks worse on our part if we wanted to cross again. So it shows that we're trying to, you know, cross the border illegally, which we were not trying to do at all. So you said that you're flagged and you're waiting to see now if there's some way you can still get to this job um, that was offered to you. But something about the flagging, you guys were kind of threatened about what would happen to you if you tried to get across yeah. the border again. And what is that? Um, if I remember correctly, it was like a, um, what was it, a million dollar fine or something crazy yeah, and five year, three year, three year, no, three, five. Year, three years in jail and, oh, and the five year bar out of the U.S. So we couldn't even fly over. This is insane, people. I mean, are people still not getting how much, even though we might not have to wear a mask in British Columbia right now, even though 95% of the people are still doing it indoors, we are not free. We are not free when you go to try to, uh, you know, better your family, take part in a new opportunity, and then it doesn't work out at the border, and you can't even freely get back to the country because you stepped foot somewhere else. Comment below, let us know how outrageous you think this is or if you think it's reasonable and for more info on the other side of the story make sure you go to rebelnews.com there you can give us your phone number as well as your email so that we never lose touch drea humphrey for rebel news big tech is trying to silence us for bringing you the other side of the story but we're not going to let that happen go to rebelnews.com give us your phone number and your email so that we don't lose touch